Hello everyone, and welcome to Pyanodon's Mods. This is Otaku Showboat, and today we are going to be talking about Circuit 2s. Again! If you have been enjoying the tutorial series thus far, please be sure to do all of the social and engagement stuff below the video. You can, of course, follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash otaku showboat, as well as support my Amazon's mods development at patreon.com slash pyandon, and myself at patreon.com slash otaku showboat. So, Circuit 2s have undergone a number of updates, shall we say, since the last time we, uh, we met uh, to talk about these. Uh, in particular, they have a brand new ingredient known as the MOSFET that has been added to it, and, uh, yeah, we've got uh, some updates regarding the Pi Alien Life uh, edition that sort of changes how we get into things. Uh, specifically, it changes the material costs a little bit, gives you some other things to have to think about going into this. So, we will begin today with the batteries. There are many recipes to get into batteries, but I prefer the recipe that uses the least amount of rayon overall, in which this one uses the least amount of rayon. Steel, sulfur, chromium, rayon, lead, and sodium hydroxide. That is pretty expensive on the sodium hydroxide and sulfur side of things, but it is the least expensive on rayon, and that is the most important part of all of this, because rayon, rayon is urea, twice as much urea as rayon you, that you get out. Uh, and it's ammonia. Why, why, why urea bad? Urea, urea very bad. Uh, urea is a large setup uh, of manure to get into, generally speaking. So, anytime you can reduce the amount of urea that you're using, uh, the better, because that is fewer entities. That's better performance in your on on your map. Whenever you can avoid uh, having to build a lot of entities. Similarly with fiber, fiber is also a little bit of a pain now, more of a pain than it was before, just because this is a rather large build for Kick Elk to get into fiber, uh, and uh, fiber, the recipe to make it, gives you a solid fuel output in the form of biomass that you have to deal with, and dealing with a solid fuel byproduct is one of the worst possible things that you can have as one of the as a byproduct to have to deal with, so there's that to have to think about. Sodium carbonate is made out of sodium sulfate. It's pretty simple. Uh, you've probably already made sodium sulfate by this point, so it's just an extra little processing step there, adding in coke and limestone. Uh, carbonyl sulfide is going to consume coal and sulfur and propene, which is a bit of a lead sink to get into the propene through the standard recipe. Uh, and then more ammonia, which, if you have not done bat brain biocomputing, can also be pretty expensive, because that's also urea. Uh, and then sulfuric acid, many ways of getting into sulfuric acid, you can take your pick. I'm not really going to discuss the optical fiber, because we have a separate video about the optical fiber, as, as I got a, as I got a meow, a meow from the dolly who's been sitting in my lap. Yes, you're, you're repositioning yourself, dolly. In my in my lap uh so not going to discuss optical fiber as much as she goes to the to the desk uh because we have a separate video on that the same goes for the circuit ones and the pcb twos so the pcb twos i discussed in detail not in its own video but in the neuroprocessors video which i have done prior to this that neuroprocessors uh require circuit twos uh, pcb twos excuse me uh, so that gets discussed in detail there. But I have it listed out here just to reiterate a little bit uh, that these are going to require phenolic boards and nylon. <laughs> nylon. That. That's that's nylon. The one that I prefer through blood meal and blood and phenol. We'll be using phenol in other spots along this line, which makes it useful. Uh, nylon also applies in uh, optical fiber. Uh, so I discuss it there too. Phenolic boards are going to require bakelite as well as fiber board, sodium hydroxide, and more ammonia. The bakelite is going to require zinc chloride, which is, well, zinc and hydrogen chloride. And uh, if I can scroll down, 
it will require biomass and phenol and formaldehyde, which is copper and methane, uh, generally. The etching solution is going to be large plus phosphoric acid and sulfuric acid and hydrogen peroxide, nickel plus anthraquinone, chromium aromatics, liquid nitrogen, which is going to use some uh, gasoline as well. That is that. From here, diodes. Diodes are rare earth oxides plus silicons, light N and light P, and cermet, which is... Lubricant plus ash plus crude cermet. The crude cermet is molly ore, nickel ore plus ceramics. Definitely something that's a little bit on the trickier side to get into uh, because of those ore requirements. Uh, that, we need no, more nylon. More nylon. Lots of nylon. Uh, and also lots of rare earth oxides, as we'll see. Plus tin plates and a vacuum. The microchips are very similar except that the rare earth oxides have been replaced with plastic and the nylon has been replaced with tin cable. That's the only effective difference between microchips and diodes. The medium resistors, or resistor 2s, are going to require ferrochrome, which I will note, you have ferrochrome if you are setting up circuit 2s, because in order to make some of the later things that we'll look at, you're going to need gas processing unit buildings, and those require stainless steel, and stainless steel requires ferrochrome. And phosphate rocks, and cobalt extract, and a whole bunch of other things to think about, but yeah, you'll, you need to get into stainless steel to get into here. But I will have a more detailed discussion of stainless steel once we get into chemical science, which directly needs stainless steel uh, next time. Uh, we meet, ideally. Uh, you also need the resistor 1s, which we discussed in the circuit 1 video, as well as boric acid. The transistors uh, are going to require melamine resin, which we've seen from circuit 1s, as well as the heavy endosilicon and the light N and the light P, plus more nylon and vacuum. Capacitor 2s will require their capacitor 1 counterparts, as well as aluminium plates, and tinned cable, and boric acid, and aluminium pulp 1, which needs phosphoric acid first. So you, you get the idea here, you need to do the phosphoric acid chain first, as well as have zinc and have all this other stuff. Inductor ones are going to need ferrite, as well as melamine resin. Inductor, the inductor 2s, excuse me, need inductor 1s with the ferrite and the melamine resin and the tinned cable. A note on ferrite. Ferrite is incredibly expensive on the zinc as well as the iron oxide. Uh, it will be up to you to decide what you want to do to get iron oxide on a regular, consistent basis. The A dedicated iron oxide recipe. Uh, I would say that the sorting of forced fraction is an option as well as the nitrobenzene plus iron if you are willing to spend iron. The, uh, the gravel here from Coarse Fraction is barely free, uh, as is this sand sorting, although this sand sorting, I think, only is at Blue Science. I could be wrong. I don't know off the top of my head when this particular recipe unlocks, at what tech it unlocks, but I think it's not available right yet. I could be wrong, though. If you vat brain biocompute, then you absolutely have access to it by now. Like, I can I can basically guarantee that, uh, at least. And it consumes nichrome! So, like, yeah, it's it's ugly. I, I hate I hate fer ferrite. Ferrite is way too expensive uh, in the grand scheme of things, and it it's only really used... Uh, it's used significantly in these circuit twos, but then it gets used in uh, the really late phases of the game the really late phases of the game. These coil cores are a little bit earlier, but things like the wall shields and the blanket chassis, yeah, we're talking about just a few things that you need to get into the last couple sciences, the utility and space science, before you really need even more of it. But you need a lot of circuit twos, and there's a big expense there for that. Uh, so then we get into the MOSFETs. Uh, so yes, yes, there are two different types of transistors used in circuit 2s. This has been pointed out. It's still the way it is. 
uh, and it will likely remain the way it is. Uh, so, plastic plus nisi, nickel silicon, and silicon carbide, and more rare earth oxides, all three of our available dope silicons right now. Note that there is a heavy P-dope silicon that is not made or used uh, until circuit threes. Uh, so both forms of the nitrogen doped and the light doped, uh, P-doped, phosphorus doped silicons. Uh, so aluminium plates from, from, from here, aluminium plates and the pulp again, and sulfuric acid. It's sort of like a combination of a lot of the other stuff, plus you've got these to new, brand new into the game ingredients here. So, let's break down a lot of these shared components that uh, we haven't seen to this point. The heavy endope silicon requires rare earth oxides, more rare earth oxides, plus sil uh, silicon wafers and etching solution. The light N is more wafers plus phosphine. The light P is going to be zinc acetate diborane with the silicon wafers and etching solution. Now zinc acetate is a lot of zinc plates plus acetic acid, which is gonna need methanol, carbon dioxide, and chromium. I'll leave it up to you on what you want to do for the methanol. The nisi is going to require cobalt extract as well as silicon and nickel plates and vacuum, noting that uh, no, note that you do get half of your cobalt extract back in this process. So at least, at least you get some of your cobalt extract back out of this. And then the silicon carbide comes from green silicon carbide, and uh, that comes from coke and graphite and powdered quartz. Powdered quartz, not crushed quartz. So this is jaw crushed and then ball milled quartz. The silicon wafers are going to require a lot of silicon, additional silicon, and the graphite and crushed quartz, so just the jaw crushed quartz, and aramid. Hey, aramid. Yeah, that stuff, that stuff that requires molybdenum plates to make? Yeah, that stuff. If you weren't aware and haven't done that yet, you need it for the optical fiber anyway on the early steps of optical fiber, like one of the beginning steps needs aramid too. Silicon itself is just a whole bunch of pure sand and coal dust. It's pretty easy to get. It's just a lot of buildings to get this much pure sand and this much coal dust. Now, cobalt extract is going to need mixed ores as well as cyanic and pressurized air. The cyanic, I'll leave it to you, what you want to do to get the cyanic. The mixed ores is going to require copper, nickel, and rare earth ores. So not only do you need the five rare earth ores-ish to get into the five rare earth oxides that you need uh, in this process just to get one circuit two, you also need a couple more units of that rare earth ore to make the amount of mixed ores that you need for the cobalt extract that you'll be expending in this process, but you need a lot more cobalt extract as well to get into stainless steel so that you can make the gas processing units and have the stainless steel needed to get into chemical science, as well as the stainless steel needed to get into advanced small parts as and into the red belts and all the other buildings after you get circuit twos that are at Mark II that are going to need stainless steel. So you need a, a lot of this stuff, so be prepared for uh, spending quite a lot of, uh, of these ores uh, to do that. The other thing to note is that all this, a lot of this can take productivity modules, not all of it by default, but a lot of the later steps, which is where it's actually quite important, do take productivity uh, modules, and uh, you get cascading effects on that. Uh, the, f deep, the deeper you can get, uh, the more of the chain you can have productivity on, the more that productivity adds up, and the lower the overall final cost is going to be of your circuits. The most important part is, of course, this last step, getting the productivity modules in the chip shooter machines. That is uh, going to be rather important, considering as well that once you do get into circuits, Two's, 
uh, you can officially make the first level of all three modules. They they use Circuit 1s and Circuit 2s to get that first level module, and I would absolutely recommend going through and retrofitting the entirety of both Circuit 1s and Circuit 2s to use productivity modules as soon as you get access to them, assuming you're using vanilla modules. If you're using Bob's modules, you have to wait a little bit longer to get into Particle Acceleration for gold before you can start making modules. But other than that, that is the current state of Circuit 2s. With that, I would like to thank you all for watching. This has been Otaku Shibut. If you have enjoyed this video, please be sure to do all the social and engagement stuff down below. You can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Otaku Shibut and support Pyandon's mods development at patreon.com slash Pyandon and myself at patreon.com slash Otaku Shibut if you are so inclined and able. I will see you all on the next one. Thank you.